I'm Helen, 72 years old, and I'm not ashamed to admit that I've been lonely. My husband, Harold, passed away five years ago, and ever since, this big old house has felt emptier than I ever thought possible. Harold and I built a life together here. We filled every room with love, laughter, and most importantly, our daily bedroom play. My husband was the sweetest person I know in bedroom. He gives it to me every time, and this made me to always want to see him touching me. And when he died, it felt like the colours in my world all faded to grey. I had my garden, though. That was my refuge, my escape. It was where Harold and I used to spend our weekends, planting roses and watching them grow. After he was gone, the garden became my way of holding on to him, of keeping his memory alive. But as the years went by, the weeds grew faster than I could manage, and the heavy lifting became too much for me. That's when Sam came into the picture. Sam was my gardener, a man in his early 40s with rough hands, broad shoulders, and a smile that was warm enough to melt the frostiest of mornings. He wasn't like most of the young men these days. He had this old-fashioned politeness about him, always calling me Miss Helen, even though I insisted he just call me Helen. He'd been tending my garden for over a year now, and in that time, we'd built a kind of friendship, if you could call it that. Every Thursday, Sam would come by to work and I'd make us tea. Sometimes we'd talk about the weather, the flowers, or little things going on in the world. I'd sit on the porch with my cup of tea, watching him work, and I started to notice how much I looked forward to those Thursdays. There was something about the way he moved, the way he listened when I spoke, that made me feel like I mattered again, like I wasn't just some lonely old woman in a big empty house. One particular Thursday, something in me shifted. I was watching Sam as he trimmed the roses, the sun casting a soft glow over his face. I found myself wondering what it would feel like to dance with him, to have his arms around me even if just for a moment. It was a ridiculous thought really, something I hadn't felt since Harold was alive, but the idea wouldn't leave my mind. Taking a deep breath, I decided to take a chance. I walked out to the garden, my heart beating faster than it had in years. Sam looked up at me, wiping the sweat from his brow, and gave me that familiar smile. Miss Helen, he said, nodding politely. What can I do for you today? I hesitated for a moment, feeling foolish, but then I pushed through. Sam, I said softly, would you come sit with me for a moment? I have a favor to ask. He looked a bit puzzled, but followed me to the wooden bench on the porch. We sat down, and for a second I didn't know if I could go through with it. But then I looked at him, really looked at him, and I thought about all the years I'd spent feeling invisible. Sam, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. I know this might sound strange, but would you dance with me, just for a moment, right here in the garden? He stared at me, eyes wide, clearly taken aback. Dance with you? He repeated, as if he wasn't sure he'd heard right. Yes, I said, feeling a blush creep up my cheeks. I haven't danced since Harold died, and I miss it so much. I miss feeling close to someone. Would you do that for me, Sam? He hesitated, looking at me like he was trying to figure out if I was serious, but then he stood up and extended his hand to me, a gentle smile spreading across his face. If that's what you'd like, Miss Helen he said, and in that moment, he wasn't just my gardener, he was something more. I took his hand, and as he pulled me close, I felt the world slow down. We began to sway to the rhythm of a song only I could hear, the roses and daisies surrounding us like silent witnesses. His touch was firm yet tender, and I closed my eyes remembering what it felt like to be held, to be cared for. It felt like a lifetime since I'd had that, and I didn't want the moment to end. But then I felt something change. I let my hand slide up to his shoulder, my fingers lingering there a bit too long. I opened my eyes, and when I looked at Sam, I saw something in his gaze, something that told me he felt it too. It wasn't just kindness or pity. It was a connection, a spark that neither of us had expected. Miss Helen, he said, his voice soft and almost trembling. You're a beautiful woman, and I'm honoured to dance with you, but I... Before he could finish, I did something reckless, something I hadn't done in years. I leaned in and kissed him, a soft, lingering kiss that spoke of all the loneliness, all the yearning I'd kept bottled up inside. 
For a moment, he froze, surprised, but he didn't pull away. And in that split second, I felt alive, truly alive, in a way I hadn't since Harold was taken from me. When I finally pulled back, Sam's eyes were filled with something I couldn't quite place. Shock, confusion, maybe even a hint of desire. But then, reality hit like a cold wave washing over us both. I'm sorry, I whispered, my voice cracking. I shouldn't have... Miss Helen, he said gently, taking a step back. You don't need to apologise. I just... I didn't expect that. He looked down at his hands, then back at me, his eyes searching mine. You're a wonderful woman, and I respect you more than you know, but I can't. I'm just the gardener. I felt my heart drop, the sting of his words like a slap in the face. Of course he couldn't. What was I thinking? A man like Sam, with his whole life ahead of him. What would he want with an old woman like me? I'd crossed a line and I knew it. I was foolish to think that dance could mean more than it did. I understand, I said, forcing a smile that didn't reach my eyes. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for the dance. He nodded, still looking at me like he wasn't sure what to say. And then he turned and walked back to the garden, his back to me, the moment we'd shared already slipping away like a dream I'd woken up from too soon. As I watched him from the porch, my heart aching, I realised something. I'd been reaching out, not just for the touch of another human being, but for the chance to feel alive again. To feel like I wasn't just fading away into nothing. I wasn't sorry for the kiss. I was sorry that the dance had to end. Sorry that reality didn't give me the fairy tale ending I'd craved even at my age. Life goes on, I suppose. Thursdays still come and go, and Sam still comes to tend to my garden. We talk, we laugh, but there's a silence between us now, a question hanging in the air that neither of us dares to answer. And as much as I try to put that kiss out of my mind, I know that every time I see him, I'll remember the day when, for one brief moment, I dared to reach out for something more. And I'll wonder, what if I hadn't let go? What if, just once, I'd held on a little longer?